Okay, let's go ahead and get things rolling here with our GIMP software. And I've got the little icon here on the desktop. Go ahead and double click on that to open it up. All right, neat, cute. Now, every time that you open up your GIMP, unless you have this unticked, you're going to get the GIMP tip of the day, which I suggest leaving it go, you know, have it come up every time, because it's always got some really cool information up here uh, that will increase your, your information on how to work different uh, parts of the GIMP software. So after you've read a couple of these, you know, next tip, blah, 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 you can go ahead and close that out. Now, uh, this is our basic toolbox. We've got a lot of different tools to work with here, several functions, and we'll go over this in more detail in future videos. Now, one thing that I did mention in a prior video was that in each of these tools, there's a lot of different functions that you can get to if you double click on the uh, icon. Well, this is kind of cumbersome. It gets in the way. You got two boxes. You know, it's, bottom line is there's a better way to do this. Right here, down at the bottom box here, go ahead and uh, click on this arrow. Go to Add Tab and go up to the top under Tool Options, and it will put that same function, additional properties of these tools, at the bottom box here. So here, under the uh, Text tool, where we can create or edit our letters. You get the options uh, or the properties of the text tool, such as selecting the different fonts, the uh, size, uh, color of the text, and so on. Likewise, if we were to click on uh, this brush, the airbrush, uh, or oh, let's say the rectangle select tool, all the different options we have right here. And this button here covers the different layers that we have. So let's go ahead and jump right into this and select a new layer or create a new layer. Do that by going up here to File, go to New, and you can select from pre-made templates here. And I believe you can even create your own too, but we'll go over that later. Or you can just uh, manually type in the size or dimensions of your canvas you want to work with here. A couple other things I want to point out while we're here is under this you can choose the type of dimensions you're working with, whether it's in pixels or inches or millimeters. I suggest if you're going to be working with web graphics to pick pixels. And that way it'll be more applicable to you know, what you're currently working with as far as uh, web images. Now down here under advanced options, we'll take a quick gander at this. Here under the X and Y resolutions, if this says 300 or 150, go ahead and change it to 72 dot or 72 point because the larger this number is, the longer the image will take to upload and to download. It's a larger file size. And you really cannot get much of a difference visually. You can't really see too much of a difference between a 72 and a 300. So there's really not much of a, an advantage of having this number larger unless, say, for example, you're going to be printing. Then I can see increasing this size. Otherwise, leave it at 72. And going, coming down here, uh, you got your RGB color, and you know, check out the or that or the grayscale, and we'll leave it at RGB. And you can fill with white. This is uh, the background basically, whether it's transparent, which is working. This works better, I think, if you're dealing with images, you know, like uh, stock photos and such. We'll leave it at white for now. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and make this 300. So we got us a box we're working with and click OK, and boom, here's our canvas we'll be working with. Go ahead and make this a little bigger. And um, one thing I want to point out, too, is our color picker here. This is, um, let me go ahead and pull up a brush here. I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but we'll cover all this stuff in greater detail as we go along. But under the brush here, you can, uh, under the properties, you can choose the style of brush, whether it's a pepper. Yep, I said pepper. Go ahead and click on that, and boom kind of drag this around. There's our peppers. Weird brush. But anywho, that might come in handy at some point down the line because we'll also go over on how you can create your own brushes. Now, while I'm on this topic of having all these peppers all over the canvas, up along the top here, you have several options you can work with. What I'm going to deal with right now is the Fix My Mistake option, otherwise known as Undo, which the shortcut to that is Control Z, where you hold the Control button down, on your keyboard and then tap the letter Z. Let's go ahead and do that. And then one more. Get rid of that pepper guy. Now let's get us an honest to goodness brush over here. 
And right now we've got a foreground of black and a background of white. And you can switch these by clicking this arrow up here. But right now we've got the black going on. And if we try to go outside of the canvas, it isn't going to work. Because all we're dealing with here, all this will allow us to do is within the canvas. So any work we do is going to remain in here. And if we try to save this, it's not going to save any of this out here, just the work inside the canvas. So keep that in mind as you're doing your work here. Uh, now how we can change this, let's go ahead and get rid of these guys, is you simply click on this and it brings up your color picker to change the foreground color. And you have different options up here that you can do this with. A lot of cool options. Now let's stick with this. In this case, you can just move this guy around. You can see right here under the current, this is the existing, and this is the, what we're about to change it to. And that's one way you can change the color. You, if you know the uh, hexadecimal number, you can just type that in there. Or if you're trying to uh, replicate an existing color on your, say, web page, then usually if you check out the HTML source code of your web page, it'll give you the hexadecimal uh, alphanumeric code if you will and you simply type it in here and boom you've got an exact replica otherwise if you know the RGB format you can just type that in here these three numbers here or you can just scroll them back and forth this way as well and you can also set them by once you've got your color picked hit OK and there you go and you can do the same with the background but this is our color scheme right now now then, um, and you can choose the opacity. In other words, this is the same as transparency. So if we go down to say 30, you can see how it's a lot lighter. And it will show through what's in the background here. Let me show you. Uh, now this bucket fill, this is going to fill basically the entire area that you're working with currently. In this case, this is what we're working with currently. So let's go here. Boom. Now then. Let's switch colors here and I'll show you that transparency thing. Now then if we, back on the brush, had this at full opacity, 100%, then it's going to see the whole thing. Now if we reduce the opacity, this can be transparent. You can see it didn't go through this. It'll, it'll, well it's transparent, it's more transparent, all the way down to invisible, which is basically kind of useless. And if we go back up here, you can see. Now let's change the color here too to black, or let's go with this guy. And full opacity, you see it goes right over this. Now if we reduce the opacity, you can see right through it. So you'll see benefits to this in some of your work down the line. So remember opacity and your color picker and your brush styles and oh one other quick thing too I'm going to go over some of the options of the layers right now we have one layer and if we want to get rid of the layer the all seeing eye just click on that and now we've got the transparent background basically a, a blank canvas with no paper on it we're going to put paper on it let's bring the eye back I guess that's one way to look at it. And now then, let's go ahead and add another layer to this. Now down here at the bottom, we just highlight this and then click on the trash can, we get rid of it. Now we want that control Z, bring it back. And let's create a new layer. This gives us all the properties of the new layer and you can rename it too if you want. Click on OK. And this layer, we want to be blue. So right now, let's bring this guy down here. Okay, well it's not letting us, is it? There we are. Okay, now we want this guy to be blue. So now it's blue. Now then, let's bring it back up, and there's the layer. Because the layer on top is one that's going to be predominant. That's one that's going to be showing through. Now then, let's change the opacity of this real quick and see if we can kind of get a purple color where it blends into the layer behind it. Let me do that right here. See how it's kind of blending in? 
all the way down to invisible. Now this would be a pretty cool effect if, if this guy here were an image of say the White House and you put this guy up here and you can change the overall detail of the White House by making it more antique looking. Yeah, just an idea. Anyway, that kind of introduces you to a little bit about the color and the um, additional properties for these tools up here and how you can view them down at the bottom. And the brush we went over briefly and how to start things off by creating a new canvas and sticking within the line, so to speak. So thanks for watching this video.